Ron DeSantis suspends a very woke prosecutor in the state of Florida. You see him, this guy, Andrew Warren. He's a state attorney and he was not doing the bidding of Florida voters. And so the governor, Ron DeSantis, came out with a very interesting press conference and said, easy, no problem at all. Guess what? The Florida Constitution says, I can throw you right out on your booty not even have to really think too much about it. And so we're going to listen to the actual press conference from Ron DeSantis. He posted an official update on his website. We'll take a look at that. He goes about kind of through this for about five minutes. And it's pretty interesting to see how he's going to be approaching this. And we'll spend some time, you know, unpacking all of that. Then we will go through his order in full detail. I have it here. We've got our red pen ready to go. The executive order of suspension because there's some good stuff in here. It details why Ron DeSantis says this guy is no good, why he needs to get booted on out of there. And it's it's actually kind of a substantive document. It's 29 pages, but we'll be able to fly through it quickly as you'll see. So we'll come back to that, but it is going to be an important sort of piece of this because it's all based on the Florida constitution, which says that he is allowed to do this. Now, before we get into this, big, big shout out to Paul Mino, who's in the house, who gifted 10 memberships over to our incredible YouTube community. Thank you to Paul Mino. 10 people just got gifted memberships, which is just outstanding. So thank you, Paul, for your extreme generosity. A lot of new members on Paul, but Paul is here. Thank you, Paul for that. And Paul also, I, I forgot, Paul has our pinned chat of the day. Let's pause on that for a minute. Paul has the pinned chat. He says, hmm, who's getting the free memberships today? Could be you. So exciting. Everything is better here. I've gained girth, length, and yaw in just one day since membership. So, and he get, he's so pleased with those results that he gifted 10 of those to everybody else out there. Just outstanding. What a great community we have here. All right. And so now, Andrew Warren, of course, is the subject of this entire suspension, kind of a firing, really, if you want to put it that way. And so before we dig into it, we have to learn a little bit more about this guy and why Ron DeSantis threw him out. First, we have to understand that this is the organization that he is a part of. Okay, He signed his name to a bunch of letters that are promoted by this organization. Who is this organization? What do they do? They're called the Fair and Just Prosecution dot org organization and let's learn a little bit more about them shall we first we're going to turn off the dark mode it says fair and just prosecution it, it em embodies it brings together elected local prosecutors as part of a network of leaders committed to promoting a justice system oh here it comes here it comes grounded in fairness equity there's that word, compassion and fiscal responsibility. Now here, let's take a quick listen and see what they're talking about. For too long, the hmm. prosecutors, judges, and many people involved in our justice system needed to act like they were tough on crime in order to get elected. Judges, prosecutors That's true. have a pretty sad history of extremely, excessively, unreasonably long sentences. I mean, the bottom line is we that's true too. Real good at locking people up. I mean, I think the goal is to reduce crime, right? Yes. And you reduce crime by helping people stay out of the system. Yeah. By helping people stay out of the system. Now, right. There's a lot of conversation about this and this is an actual, you know, you know I don't mean to poke fun at this organization too, too much because, well, we're going to see what they have to say and we'll save it for then. But right, th these are people who are intending to improve justice. And I've been long, long, critically long time critical good lord of the current sort of version of our justice system in many ways i've said that you it's very difficult to punish the pain out of people and the pain leads to criminality and it's this sort of compounding snowball this vicious cycle that continues on and on and on and results in more criminality and so rather than focusing on punishment and retribution, we should focus on restoration and rehabilitation, right? And focus on those things. And so this organization sounds like they're behind that. But the problem is, look who's here. Oh, it's Kim Fox, the state attorney out of Cook County, Chicago. Oh, so she's going to be the person who's going to be this new equitable arbiter of justice. She's going to be the new version of a prosecutor that we want. What did she Everybody's going to be treated like the juicy small yay. I don't know how that one would work. So 
right? That's the type of organization we're dealing with. We've talked a lot about Kim Fox and, and some of these other prosecutors and how they are weaponizing these justice systems. They're not creating a better justice system. They are using it to prosecute their political enemies and right the societal wrongs, right? It's not about justice anymore. It's about equity or whatever the heck they're talking about. Promoting a justice system grounded in equity. So I don't, I don't know, is it, does, do certain races get more punishment than others? I don't know what that means, but I don't know that they do either. So this is the organization that Mr. Warren is a part of, and we're gonna get to his response. He's you know unhappy with being fired, obviously. But Ron DeSantis came out and he posted this on his website. And this came out literally August 4th yesterday. And here it says, Governor Ron DeSantis blog post. I wonder if he even called him. He says, Governor Ron DeSantis suspends state attorney Andrew Warren for refusing to enforce Florida law. And he appoints somebody else. Her name is Susan Lopez. We're not going to spend much time on her. But he said that this guy is booted out of here. Why? He suspended state attorney Andrew Warren of the 13th Judicial Circuit due to neglect of duty. Governor has the authority to suspend him under Section 7 of the Florida Constitution. He's appointed somebody else to appear in her place. And so the rest of this is talking about Susan Lopez and how amazing she is. But he references the Florida Constitution, saying that he can boot people out of there if they're neglect or if they're drunks. Oh, I wonder if they have that in California for Pelosi. So, you know, the list goes on and on. Now, this is the Florida Constitution, and here is what it says to make sure that he is referencing this appropriately. And here it is. Article section here authorizes the governor to suspend any state officer not subject to impeachment on any of the following grounds, neglect of duty, right? So there it is, executive suspensions. The Florida Senate has the responsibility to sit in judgment of the merits of the suspension. So it's almost like an impeachment process. Okay, so you go through, you know, the so like the House of Representatives in the federal level, we talked a lot about this with Trump, they impeach the president and then you have the trial in the Senate. Here, the governor can actually order the suspension if they are not subject to impeachment. So you see it's sort of an escape hatch. If this individual cannot be impeached, well, how else do you get them out of office? If they're drunks or incompetent, or if they can't perform their duties, or if they're felons, or if they're full of malfeasance, well, then you have to have a different mechanism to throw them out of there because you can't impeach them, right? So now we know that the governor can initiate sort of a pseudo impeachment process, and then this person can sit in the judgment in the Senate. The Senate may remove from office or reinstate the suspended official. Senate Rule 12 outlines the process of this. So it's going to go over, right? So it's sort of, you know, not, not a done deal yet. He's going to have to have a trial, presumably, according to, you know, this. And we'll see where that goes. But otherwise, it looks like, yeah, the governor can just go ahead and do that. So we'll listen to what the governor had to say first. Here he is on YouTube, and I think this audio Thank you. is really Thanks loud. Thank you. Thanks to Sheriff Cronister. Really, really loud. Yeah, I forgot about that. So we'll uh, listen in on this for a quick minute. And then actually, it's about six minutes, and it's quite good. So we'll listen to a little bit of Ron, and we'll also poke around and see if he is, if he's sort of uh, referencing for us stuff that we can unpack here, which is in his actual order. Okay, this is the executive order that he issued, which is the, the document that ultimately is going to be suspending Mr. Warren. All right, so here is DeSantis, and let's see what he has to say. For having us here for, for, the, for today's announcement, and we're glad that uh, we're back in Hillsborough County. Our uh, government is a government of laws, not a government of men. Okay, they turn the and volume what that down. that means is that we govern ourselves based on a constitutional system and based on the rule of law. But yet we've seen across this country over the last few individual prosecutors take it upon themselves to determine which laws they like and will enforce and which laws they don't like and then don't enforce. Yeah. And the results of this in cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco have been catastrophic. You could go in in San Francisco and steal a certain amount of merchandise and you just would, by definition, not be prosecuted. That has undermined public safety. It has really hurt these communities uh, and has been devastating to the rule of law. So as I saw that happening across the country earlier this year, I asked my staff in my office 
to look around the state of Florida and to make sure that that was not going to happen here, where you would have individual prosecutors nullify laws that were enacted by the people's representatives. They spoke with law enforcement throughout the state. They spoke with line prosecutors throughout the state. Uh, and it all came back to this area here in the 13th Judicial Circuit in Hillsborough County. All right, so let's take a quick pause and see sort of one of, take a look at one of these exhibits <clears throat> that the governor is actually referencing. Okay, so here's the entire order of suspension. We are gonna come back to this in a minute, but I wanted to show you sort of their exhibit. So here's exhibit A. Now we talked at the beginning about this organization, Fair and Just Prosecution. That is the organization that sort of wants to reform prosecution in America. And so they've got this big long letter that they drafted. And if we take a look at the signatories to this, we should see well, oh, Letitia James is on there. Remember her? Letitia James is on there. So, yeah, we've actually got a lot of people on this. Marilyn Mosby, remember her? Baltimore, she's on this list. Uh, Racine from D.C., we've referenced him a lot. Jeff Rosen. Uh, let's see who else is on here. The list just goes on and on. Okay, all of these are prosecutors, but this is the one we're looking for. Andrew Warren, okay, 13th Judicial District out of the Circuit Court of Florida, and really, right, this is the only sort of thing that the governor is 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 capable of having jurisdiction over. You know, governor DeSantis can't do anything in North Carolina, for example. So he see now my next question is, well, uh, Monique signed this and she's in Florida. Monique might be next. Monique's Worrell might be next. She might be getting another one of these soon enough. But he signed off on this. OK, so Andrew Warren signed off on this document listed under Exhibit A. And what is this document? Well, here's what it says. A joint statement from elected prosecutors and law enforcement leaders condemning the criminalization of transgender people and gender affirming healthcare. Okay, so this was about just, just over a year ago, back uh, June, 2021. And so they write this letter, right? They, they All these prosecutors that we just listed, they all signed off on this thing and they sent it all over the place, right? Joint statement. They like to do this, right? They draft letters, just like those 50 people who were so-called intelligence people all had a, an opinion about Hunter Biden. All of them wrong. Letter was totally meaningless, but it didn't really hurt their credibility or didn't did really impact anything. In fact, it sort of, uh, I think, buttressed their credibility. Many people sort of think that they are still truthful, but that's a whole separate saga. This is the same modality, right? They're all going to sign a letter and they're going to say, man, that was a really, really important day. What'd you do today, Andrew? Signed a letter. Yeah. We're affirming health care for transgender people. And I won't have any part of the criminalization of it. Okay, so all of that goes on and on. And they write, as elected prosecutors and law enforcement leaders, we condemn the ongoing efforts to criminalize transgender people and gender affirming health care across the country. These blatantly unconstitutional attacks on some of the most vulnerable Americans will deeply harm public safety. We call on policymakers to stop all of this. Leave health care decisions to patients and don't promote the criminalization of gender affirming health care or gender for transgender people. They're saying that they're prosecutors. We are responsible for pursuing justice for all people and they don't want to make them victims. They don't want to discriminate against them. They want to work with those types of people. And so they're saying they've got some concerns about restrictions that bills have that block trans youth from receiving life-saving gender-affirming health care. Okay, if you block them from getting that life-saving gender-affirming health care, then you're killing them because you're blocking them from living, right? So far this year, 20 state legislatures have considered a total of 29 proposals that would prevent many trans youth from receiving this essential medical care. This ongoing discrimination and hostility that trans youth face has already had a grim impact. In 2020 alone, a national survey found that over half of trans and non-binary youth seriously considered suicide. Footnote six, research has firmly established that access to gender affirming health care not only reduces the risk of suicide in youth, it significantly reduces their lifetime risk of suicidal ideation, right? So if you don't support their gender affirming care, you are killing them. You are causing them to be suicidal and resulting in their deaths. Okay, 
Additionally, for several years, anti-trans legislatures have worked to pass laws that prohibit trans people from using single-sex facilities, restrooms that align with their gender identity. Six such bills have been introduced in states in 2021. Bills have no public safety justification, right? For example, like if a, I don't even want to give examples because, you know, who knows what type of uh, rules I'll be breaking here, but you get the point. Bathrooms, if you, if you say biological people got to go to biological bathrooms, that is causing people to live in stigma and it's causing the reinforcement of falsehoods that trans people pose a public safety threat. And so you can't do that. Prosecutors are trusted with immense decision-making capabilities and we're directing all of our offices, right? Here's where he says this. We have been elected to run our offices and both chief prosecutors and law enforcement leaders have an obligation to ensure that we're directing our limited resources for justice, right? To advance fairness and justice for all. Bills that criminalize and do these types of things serve no legitimate purpose. And so we are going, right? We pledge, this is where he's taking action. We pledge to use our settled discretion and limited resources on enforcement of laws that will not erode the safety and the well being of our community. And you're saying, wait, listen here. Nobody asked you if you think that you, you have an obligation to enforce the laws as they are written, right? Is, is why you are a district attorney, it's why you're a prosecutor. If the legislature decides this is the law, you got to enforce it. Otherwise, what good is the legislature? Why do you have to even have them? The, the, the prosecutor can just decide what laws they want to enforce and not enforce, right? Aren't they sort of then, if they can just to say, nah, I'm just going to enforce these laws. They're kind of the legislature at that point. Anyways, you see here, we do not support the use of our criminal justice scarce resources to criminalize doctors who offer medical care or to or who provide gender affirming care to trans youth and so on. We're gonna end this deeply disturbing, destructive criminalization of gender affirming care. And we urge other policymakers to join us. Okay, this is one example. We have another example of another letter that a bunch of these you know, people signed and made them feel good. Kim Gardner, oh yeah. Kim Fox, there's Kim Fox. Keith Ellison, uh. And we covered a lot of these people. Kim Gardner, Several of these people have been indicted. I mean, Marilyn Mosby has been indicted. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's facing federal prosecution. Uh, Letitia James, she's the one with the facial twitch who was going after Donald Trump, right? Illegitimate president. Remember that whole thing? Weird. Marilyn Mosby, yeah, I've got her. She's, she, I know she's being prosecuted because she's in my case list. So uh, anyways, you get the gist of it. So they all signed this letter and they all felt you know really good about it. Now we're going to come back to the executive order. That's only exhibit A, but let's go back and listen to Ron and see what he what else he has to say about this uh, this sort of firing. And the uh, response that we got was a lot of frustration on the part of law enforcement for criminals being let go and crimes not being prosecuted. Uh, and so we looked into it and we, we compiled a, a lot of the record. And I can tell you it's been a very, very troubling record. So uh, the prosecutor, state attorney for this judicial circuit, Andrew, uh, Warren. Andrew Warren, has put himself publicly above the law. In June of 2021, he signed a letter saying that, one we just that he it. would not enforce any prohibitions on sex change operations for minors. And that's a debate that we're having mostly administratively and through medical licensing in Florida, but other states have enacted penalties on the people that would perform those, which are really disfiguring these young kids. And he said, it doesn't matter what the legislature does in the state of Florida, uh, he's going to exercise a veto over that. Yeah, that he's makes also him the, instituted the king. policies of, quote, presumptive non-enforcement. And this involves an array of different things. And you'll probably hear Sheriff Chronister and some of the other law enforcement officers talk about it. Uh, but that is not consistent with the role of a prosecutor. Yes, you can exercise discretion in an individual case, but that discretion has to be individualized and case specific. You can't just say you're not going to do uh, certain offenses. Right. So if let, let's take, you know, a, an example of stealing a candy bar, right? Somebody is stealing a candy bar. Maybe there's a law against stealing a candy bar. So a prosecutor can decide, well, you know, look on this case, I'm not going to call that theft for whatever reason. There's mitigation here. You know, this is a starving person. This is a, a mentally unwell person. I have just, you know, a lot of empathy. I don't have judicial resources to prosecute this person. Many reasons why a prosecutor might exercise prosecutorial discretion and decide not to prosecute an individual, right? And judges have judicial discretion and all of that same stuff. But 
within bounds. You can't just say, we're not prosecuting uh, candy thefts anymore. You said, well, that's the law here. You swore an oath to uphold and execute and faithfully all that crap, the law. Yeah, but I don't care about the candy bar thing. You know, it's not just people should have as much candy as they want. This is America, dang it. And if you want to shove your face with sugar, you should be free to do that here. It's a God given right. God bless America. And, you know, and he can say, that's my opinion on it. And everybody's, you know, running out like they're in San Francisco with wheelbarrows full of Twix bars. And it's just, you know, bedlam. Nobody wants to live in that type of society. So here, DeSantis is saying he doesn't have that type of discretion and authority. And he also did the same thing with abortion. Let's see what if he gets into that here. And then most recently, after the Dobbs decision was rendered ah. by the U.S. Supreme Court, he signed a letter saying he would not enforce any laws relating to protecting the right to life in the state of Florida. And mind you, we have had prohibition on third trimester abortions for a long time. We've had prohibitions on partial birth abortions for a long time. And then most recently, the legislature enacted and I signed protections for unborn babies at three and a half months. And when they are aborted, it's typically done through a dismemberment procedure, which is really inhumane. Nevertheless, that is what the legislature has enacted, and it's not for him to put himself above that and say that he is not going to enforce the laws. We don't elect people in one part of the state to have veto power over what the entire state decides on these important issues. The Constitution of Florida has vested the veto power in the governor. And he's going to use it. Now, I wanted to show you that second letter that went out. I believe that's exhibit number two. So we already looked at the first letter that went out last year. I think this may be what did it is this brand new letter under exhibit B here. So look, it is June 24th, 2022. So just a couple months ago, another statement came out and this one was updated on 725, 2022. Another statement from all of these prosecutors again, who just said, gosh, you know, that first letter that we wrote was so impactful. It was so just moving. I mean, I felt so good. Why don't we write another one? And they did. They look at all these people. Chessa Bodoin, Bodoin, Bodine, who is now going to be out of there out of San Francisco, signed on to this letter. Bye bye. Alvin Bragg is now in New York. He, he, he just got recently elected. And who did he beat? I forget who he beat. We've got, yeah, all of these people we remember from election season. But let's see who else is on this list. We have... Keith Ellison from Minnesota, Kim Fox again from Chicago. And when we find the one that we're looking for, we're going to see it's probably Andrew Warren down. There it is. Marilyn Mosby's again, who's being indicted. And where, look at all of them. The list goes on and on and on. Finally, here he is, Andrew Warren. They're all signing off on this document because they are opposing the abortion changes. Here's what this letter says. We are a group of elected prosecutors who love writing letters and we're representing communities across every region in the country. Over the past few years, we've watched the Supreme Court wreck America and now they're ruining our country because they overturned Roe versus Wade, a right that three generations of Americans have come to rely on. And as elected prosecutors, they call themselves ministers of justice. Ugh gosh and leaders in our communities we cannot stand by and allow our communities to live in fear of the ramifications of this decision so they're just going to do whatever they want i guess not all of us agree on a personal or moral level on the issue of abortion but we stand firm in our belief that we should not be using the criminal legal system to criminalize personal medical decisions so therefore as such this is where they're taking a stand. We decline to use our office's resources to criminalize reproductive health decisions and commit to exercise our well-settled discretion and refrain from prosecuting those who seek, provide, or support abortions. So if your state decides we're going to criminalize doctors who provide abortions, let's say partial birth abortions or something like that, this guy can just decide, nope, not going to enforce that, that crime, not going to do it, not on a case by case basis in general, we're not going to do anything that he decides. So what do you even need a, a legislature for? You don't. This guy just decides on his own. 
Prosecutors are entrusted with discretion. With this discretion comes the obligation to seek justice. And so we have to do this for all community members. I think they copied and pasted that from the last decision. Probably this from the last opinion too. Enforcing abortion runs counter to our obligations. And so it traumatizes and criminalizes victims of sexual violence. And so criminalizing abortion is not going to, right? He says our legal system is already overburdened. Yeah, with marijuana and drug crimes. And as elected prosecutors, we've got a responsibility to stop enforcing the laws. Okay, we're horrified that some states have failed to carve out exceptions and so on. Okay, you get the, you get the gist of this. We're not doing it because we don't want to do it. We're, we're prosecutors and we decide that we're more important than the other individuals. And so decided just no, right? Not going to happen. Here is Ron not an individual state attorneys. And so when you flagrantly violate your oath of office, when you make yourself above the law, uh, you have violated your duty, uh, you have neglected your duty, and you are displaying a lack of competence uh, to be able to perform those duties. And so today we are suspending state attorney Andrew Warren effective immediately. Bye-bye. Standing O, you're out of here. Get the fuck out of here. All right, and so we are not. That is the statement from Ron DeSantis. Now let's take a quick look at the actual order itself because it is quite fun. And so you saw the letters, right? All the exhibits. That was it. So the most most of the thirty. 29 pages are all you know signature signatures but the actual order you can see here sort of just details out everything that we constructed we just sort of assemble it all together it says here florida constitution gives the governor the power to do it you can throw people out if there is a neglect of duty neglect of duty they have case law from florida 2019 florida 1934 Neglect of duty refers to the neglect or failure on the part of a public officer to do or perform some duty or duties laid out to him by virtue of his office or which is required of him by law, right? And they define that. It's case law. How do you define neglect of duty? Well, we've got the law to do it. Incompetence also defined gross ignorance or lack of judgment and discretion, okay? You don't have discretion to unilaterally decide not to enforce crimes. State attorneys are constitutionally elected to serve as officers and the state acts through state attorneys. And so because they are not subject to impeachment, it brings it within his jurisdiction. Constitution, as we already talked about, gives him the ability to do this. And they now have the ability to make case specific and individualized determinations, but they're not doing it, saying it's a functional veto if there is a blanket refusal to enforce the law. And they're citing case law again from New York, 1997. Failure to prosecute in a universal form is just a blanket veto on the will of the legislature and you're in office to sort of execute the laws. A state attorney, when their policy is to knowingly permit criminal activity and not file charges, they say is neglect of duty. And this prosecutor did it. Any person who does it is in violation of the law. Andrew Warren is a state attorney who is in violation of the law. We already read through exhibit A, which was the transgender enforcement criminality provision. We already read through the other section on the abortion law where he's saying the government of Florida passed HB5. We've got all sorts of abortion prohibitions in place now. But after that Prohibition came into effect, and after the Dobbs decision, guess what? This Warren fella, he wrote another letter on June 24th where he said the following, criminalizing and prosecuting individuals who provide abortion care makes a mockery of justice, and prosecutors should not be a part of that. Enforcing abortion runs counter to the obligations we're sworn to uphold, and as such, we decline to use our offices to enforce these laws. And so they say he's the only state attorney in Florida who signed this statement and he signed it in his official capacity as state attorney. Okay. So that, that, that Monique who signed the first letter, she didn't sign the second letter. Smart move. That's why she's still sitting in her office right now. She's like, Whoo, that was close. I mean, he came in, he's like, she's like, uh, Brittany, listen, I swear he literally came into my office that morning and I said I was going to get to it that afternoon. And I just forgot and I didn't sign it. And now he's out of here. We should go out for drinks tonight. <laughs> and so Warren, 
has clearly and unequivocally and publicly declared that his office will not prosecute violations of Florida. And so therefore it is in violation of the law. And you see the rest of it, willful and intentional functional veto. And so he has got to go now. Therefore I on the, it, because of all of this, I declare pursuant to the laws of Florida that Andrew Warren is an attorney and that the office of the attorney is within the purview of my suspension powers. And that this guy is neglecting duty and he's incompetent and he has got to be booted out of here. So on this day, he is hereby suspended from public office. And look at this, which is just fun. He says, Andrew Warren is hereby prohibited as of this day from performing any official act, duty or function of public office, no pay, no allowance, no emoluments, no privileges, all starting right now. And by the way, after I sign this order, guess what's happening next? Section three, he says, as of the signing of this order, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, okay, the Sheriff's Department and other law enforcement agencies as necessary, here it comes, is requested to one, assist in the immediate transition of Andrew Warren from the office of the state attorney to get his personal belongings and to number two, ensure no files, no papers, no documents, notes, computers, removable storage are removed from his office or any of his staff. What that means, get his butt to get his belongings and get him out the door and they throw him right out. He also says, by the way, section four, we're also appointing Susan Lopez to replace him. Congratulations, Susan, the new district attorney signed off on the 4th of August by Ron DeSantis, governor and approved by the secretary of state with a nice attestation there. And my goodness, Ron DeSantis just throwing out old Andrew Warren right on his booty. Now, Andrew Warren is not you know happy about any of this stuff. And so he posted on Twitter immediately thereafter. And he says, listen, today's political stunt is an illegal overreach. Okay. It contains a dangerous pattern of Ron DeSantis using his office to further his own political ambition. And it spits in the face of voters of Hillsborough County have twice elected me to serve them in our community. Crime is low. Our constitutional rights, including the right to privacy are being upheld and the people have the right to elect their own leaders, not to have them dictated by an aspiring presidential candidate who has shown time and again, he feels accountable to no one. And just because the governor violates your rights, it doesn't mean they don't exist. And that's Andrew Warren, I, I guess a former district attorney out of Hillsborough County in Florida, saying he's a criminal justice reformer and a proud American and uh, probably gonna have to change this. Really not anymore. That's gonna have to be updated here on his uh, Twitter profile. So, you know, this just happened recently. It takes a few days to do that. So a uh, Mr. Andrew Warren is maybe looking for a new job. I don't know, probably gonna contest this. According to the constitution, there very well may be a trial that exists in the state of Florida, but Ron DeSantis, exercising some political muscle, throwing a woke prosecutor right out the door for not enforcing the law duly passed by Florida voters. And there'll be many more like this to cover. We'll continue to do so.